Have you ever wondered what the main components of your favorite game engines are? Is Unreal the solution to everything? Or are there pitfalls? With terms like FSR, ray tracing, and global illumination, it is easy to feel overwhelmed of what is and isn't part of a game engine. But don't worry, in this video, we'll break down what a game engine actually consists of. First of all, what even is a game engine? Well, if we look at the definition of it, a game engine is a software framework primarily designed for the development of video games and generally includes relevant libraries and support programs such as a level editor. A game engine may include 2D or 3D graphics that's compatible with different import formats, a physics engine that simulates real-world activities, and so forth and so on. In simpler term, it's a framework that takes in player interactions and assets as input and outputs them onto the screen with predefined logic in between. Yet, defining game engines isn't really that straightforward, since they are specifically designed for a specific game. So, where do we actually draw the line? We firstly need to somewhat agree that in order to define a game engine, we need to look at the majorities and not specific games in general. For example, simple text guessing games and Minesweeper aren't really the majority of games out there, so we should probably exclude them into the calculation. Now, many people segment game engines into three main categories. These are graphics, audio, and logic. But I disagree. Although graphics and audio are two good base pillars, I don't think logic should be there at all. Usually, when people try to describe logic, they wander into the game side of things. But that's not really what a game engine is, that's what a game is. We need to separate the terms engine and game. A game engine should always be able to live without the game. But the other way around doesn't really work. You can take an Unreal game and still keep the Unreal part of it, but the game can be swapped out to whatever game you want, and that is the essence of a game engine. Therefore, I think it's very important that we make this distinction of game and engine very early on. You don't need AI, ray tracing, scripting and behavior trees to make a game engine, but they are used in a lot of games. So what actually goes into a game engine? Well, this is how I would divide it. The first one is the window handling and the input system. Just as I defined earlier, we need input in some way to call it a game engine. And this is input in form of the player's control and the window handling. If we don't have the player's input, we can just call it a demo or a video, but we need this to make it interactive and actually make a game out of it. The window handling is also a big part of this, because it's how we represent the output image. Those two goes into the first category. Here, we usually find libraries such as SFML, SDL, and GLFW. The second category is almost built upon the first one, because we're looking at it as input and output still. And that is some kind of asset system or like a resource system, parsing or anything like that. Just as I said before, we need input. Input in form of play controller. But what we also need is input in form of files. These can be JSON files that represent how the game is gonna look like. These can also be files like FBXs, DDS and PNG loading because we need to take resources from the hard drive and make it into memory in our game engine. Useful libraries in this step could be Nolman, Asimp, FBX SDK, and DirectX Text. The third main component is probably as you would expect. It's rendering. This is translating logic and resources into a pipeline that then visualizes on the screen. This can be in form of UI rendering, text rendering, just 3D models, 2D models, whatever. And of course, there's a lot of cool stuff in rendering, of course I'm biased, but be sure to subscribe and you can check them out later. Whether you're using OpenGL, DirectX or Metal, or just using GLFW, the goal is to display CPU data visually. Then there's audio. I think audio is its main component because it's such a big deal in game engines. In this component, we handle audio files and we request memory from the operating system. Usually there is a lot of smart low-end systems that does this for you, and this is usually done on another thread. Libraries such as fmod is a great way to integrate this to your own engine, but it also works on Unity and Unreal. And of course, all of these have multiple systems inside of them, but the video is gonna be way too long if I go into every one of them. Let me know if you want me to cover any one of these in depth. The fifth one is physics. Physics doesn't need to be that complicated. It can just be collision shaking and trigger shaking. But in some games we actually have like rigid bodies 
and the actual physics going on in the game. Libraries that can help you with physics calculations are NVIDIA Physics, Box2D and Havoc. Although Havoc can be harder to get source code from. Physics is pretty well documented, although it's quite hard to find yourself around there. But it has been used for over 16 years, so there are a lot of communities that can help you with that. And if you're leaning towards a 2D game and want something up and running fast, Box2D is a great tool. And the sixth one that I don't think a lot of people will agree on, but it's some way to define an object in the game. This is where all the data from the input to the output is stored in some way. We need to store the input on how this object changes in time, and we need to define how an object is outputted, both in the rendering ways and in the audio ways. Whether you call them actors in Unreal or game objects in Unity, this is the backbone to holding all the essential data. And this can be a very simple data structure. But if you want something to be more expandable, I would suggest looking into ECS and a component system. So with the explanation of Game Engine and its main components, is Unreal really the ultimate solutions? Or are there pitfalls there? Well, if we look at Unreal at a glance, we can see that it supports about everything. And this isn't a bad thing, most of the time. What if we want to make a game that doesn't need 80% of what Unreal actually gives us? Well, it's not like we can tell Unreal that we don't want certain things to go into clock cycles and actually take up performance. So, if we don't utilize Unreal till its full potential, we're actually missing a lot of frames that we could gain if we did it ourselves. This often results in Unreal games that are actually underperforming what they actually could do in another engine. This is the pitfall of Unreal. So, does a better game engine actually make better games? Short answer, no. Well, here my definition comes into play. A game engine is just a framework that holds the game. It doesn't actually define what the game is gonna be like in any way. Should I just go with Unreal because it's safe or should I go with Unity because it's safe also but a little bit downscaled? Or should I just make my own engine? While all of these questions are really good to ask yourself, just stick with one, try it out, make a few games and see what you actually think is good and what you don't like with the game engine. And then you can plan out yourself if you want to make it your own or try another one. So now we have a basic idea of what a game engine actually consists of. And we can actually maybe choose the one that we actually need for our purpose. The choice of a game engine sadly isn't a one size fit all solution. It's about finding the main components that your game requires and seeing if the engine fits for that. Whether you opt for an established game engine like Unity or Unreal, or if you make your own, understanding the components of a game engine is crucial because then you know what you want to pick. Commercial engines offer convenience, but in the trade-off of unnecessary features and complexity. It's about striking the right balance of convenience and control. And because every project is so unique, and every platform we want to distribute to are so different, I made an entire video breaking down which graphics API is best to choose from, so be sure to check that out up here.